Today we're talking about factoring by using special products. Now previously when we talked about special products we brought up the fact that if you have something in the form of a plus b squared that would factor that would expand to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared or if you had a minus b in parentheses squared that would expand to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared so here we were talking about perfect square trinomials and over here we were talking about a difference of squares so when you have something in the form a plus b and a minus times a minus b where a is the same and b is the same then you end up with a squared minus b squared because the middle terms cancel out but today what we're gonna do is talk about using factoring now factoring is the reverse of expanding so because of that what we what we can do is use the special products remember an equal sign means that an equation can move in both directions so one way is equal to the other and what we've been doing before is just focusing on going from factored form to expanded form but now we're going to be talking about going from expanded form to factored form and here's where memorizing special products is super really helpful because what you can do is take a look um, for example at some different values before we practice um, one thing to do is to be able to take a look at certain polynomials in this case a trinomial and see if it's going to follow a special products format as I take a look at 16x squared plus 8x plus 1 does this follow the format a squared plus 2ab plus b squared how can I tell well let's take a look at my first term a squared let's move this to purple one way to check is to make sure to see if this is a square number 16 a square number yeah it is x squared is certainly squared what about 1 1 is also a squared number 1 times 1 is 1 4 times 4 is 16 so usually that's enough but sometimes you have to check that middle term so I can see 4 times 4, 16 is a square number, 1 times 1, 1 is a square number, but as I'm looking at the 8x, I need to see if it follows the pattern 2 times a times b. Is it 2 times a, which is 4, times b, which is 1, or in this case I have my x, does it follow that format? Yes, it does. So I know that this is a perfect square trinomial. Because it's a perfect square trinomial, I can go ahead and go back to the format a squared plus 2ab plus 1. Or sorry, plus b squared, getting ahead of myself. And I know that it's, in a, it's a perfect square trinomial in expanded form. So my factored form is going to be a plus b in parentheses squared. Which means, going back to the purple, as we go back to 16x squared plus 8x plus 1, I can see that my answer is going to be 4x plus 1 squared because it's following the format that I've set up over here. And so I see that my answer is 4x plus 1 in parentheses squared. Now, if I really want to, I can go ahead and test this now you can skip ahead, I'm going to test this out the long way. And I have 4x times 4x plus 1 plus 1 times 4x plus 1. And what I see when I expand everything out, you see that I end up with 16x squared plus 8x plus 1, which is what I started out with in the beginning. So you can always check your work. If ever you're unsure that you have the right answer, um, but trust me, if you're using special products, if you're factoring like you should, you're going to be fine. Let's take a look at this next example, z squared minus 16z plus 64. Here again, I'm looking to see if it follows the format a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I'm using minus because I see there's a subtraction sign underneath. 
Whoa, wrong eraser. All right, let's let's go again. Here we go. A squared. Oh, oh no, that, there we go. Minus two AB plus B squared. Okay, so I'm looking at my first term. A squared is that a squared term? Yeah, one Z times one Z. Uh, one Z. All right. Anyway, I'm taking a look at my last term. 64 square number? Sure it is. 8 times 8 is 64. Now I look at that middle term. Does it follow the 2 times a times b pattern? Well, 2 times a, which is 1z, so 2z times 8 is 16. 2z times 8, 16z. So yes, it is a perfect square trinomial, Psst, if you will. So then I can go ahead and follow that rule a squared minus 2ab plus b squared will factor into a minus b in parentheses squared. Because it follows that special product rule, I know that my answer is going to be 1z, or simply z, z if you will, minus 8 squared. Here's where we have to be careful. A lot of people tend to make mistakes when you're taking a look, when you're going from expanded form to factored form. That middle term needs to be negative, even though you, it's because it's going to be a negative times a negative equaling a positive in the end. That middle term is a negative, so you have to have the subtraction sign, or else that negative is not just going to pop out of thin air. Now let's take a look at the last example here. It doesn't follow the format of the other two. These were perfect square trinomials. But we did talk about another format, and that was a difference of squares. Again, why is it called a difference of squares? because it's a difference, I'm subtracting two square numbers. How do I know that those are square numbers? Well, I know 64 is a square number. If you were paying attention over here, the square root of 64 is 8. And the square root of k squared would be k. So it follows the format a squared minus b squared. These are both square terms, which means I know that a squared minus b squared follows the format of, in parentheses, a plus b times a minus b. So then my answer for 64k squared is going to follow the same format. I'm going to have 8 minus k times 8 plus k. I could have also written it as 8 plus k times 8 minus k. Commutative property, it's all good. But if I wanted to expand it and work this out, then we would see 8 times 8 plus k minus k times 8 plus k. And as I expand, you'll see here's my 64 plus 8k minus 8k. That's why my middle term cancels out. Minus k squared at the end. These values cancel. See ya. And then you're left with that 64 minus k squared. Cool. So what I want you to do is try out these two different challenge problems. If you're a little nervous about it, that's okay. Um, you'll notice that 3 and 75 are not square terms, but maybe there's something you could do to get you there. And then here we're using numbers 238 squared minus 237 squared. Don't square the numbers. See if you could use a special product to find the solution. And we'll talk about these tomorrow.